Tanawan is a very, very nice place. I mean, so many people here, in fact, so many foreigners come, come over here. Leyte is very significant because, you know, uh, we had the American liberation in 1944. So we have close ties, that is why so many, many people come over here to stay. It's so beautiful all over the place. This is historic. Uh, we have uh, Tacloban, we have Palo, and of course, Tanawan. You have, you have gone probably to the beach over here. It's so nice, facing the Pacific. We have only one doctor over here. They may have uh, good, uh, a greater number of nurses over here and medical volunteers, but it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't still be enough. Even if we go to the if rural health unit, I mean, the, where the doctors are right now, over here in our community, you can hardly get anything over there. Well, we had a very interesting visit with Dr. Arlene Santo, who is the Municipal Health Medical Director, and uh, she takes care of uh, 50, over 50,000 patients in the different barangays. They have an outpatient clinic, they have a birthing center that is still functional. Her lab has been annihilated, uh, so she has the equipment except for a hemolyzer, but uh, the lab is not functional because of the lack of a, a physical facility. And uh, she's still waiting for the rebuilding. And the original plan was to rebuild a two-story building uh, with the outpatient clinic, lab, uh, and the, uh, the birthing center. But um, uh, she's, uh, she doesn't know when that's going to happen. So, uh, but I, I must say that the, the passion and compassion that these doctors have for their fellow community members in such a tragic situation is really admirable. Of course, the Philippines has, the Philippines has got limited resources as regards these things. Tanawan is composed of about 54 villages. But you can just one doctor for Tanawan alone. <laughs> Only one doctor. That is why we need you to come over here, do mission more, more often. We apologize for this delayed departure. It is due to late arrival of our general aircraft. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. Before I left to the Philippines, I had many mixed emotions about going. I was nervous about the idea of traveling alone, but when I landed in the Philippines, I knew that this experience would be a life-changing one. And sure enough, it was. What I received during my time here in the Philippines was a fresh vision of what I hope to be able to do for others in the future. Prior to the trip, I was also concerned that I would not be able to support the team since I was not a healthcare professional. However, I learned that no matter how old or young you are, you can make a difference. Everyone has something to bring and give over to the mission. I have learned things from this trip that I would not have learned anywhere else. So I guess it's somewhat to my advantage not being in the medical field. So I can take on all the responsibilities that are, you know, kind of like the in-between stuff like uh, run an errand here, get some stuff there, because really, like writing stuff down is easy stuff. Because really, what the people need here are the nurses, and they need to be not wasting time on the stuff that I'm doing, but to actually tend to the people, get the medical, get the, all the triage, all that stuff. So, you know, so in a way, it felt like, well, if there's someone who has to do a restocking of pharmacy stuff, you know, might as well be someone like me. <laughs> Since my wife is a uh, OR nurse, which is essential. Uh, position that especially when they do the medical uh, mm -hmm. uh, mission around here is mm -hmm. a there's only one left uh, job for me left and then the only thing that happened is Gabriela asked me said can you be your can we be your PR person but somehow I said okay if that's the case which is important we as a Filipino we know the dialect we know mm -hmm. the Tagalog we know the English so we are more flexible when it comes to that 
I began to be involved with the medical mission in 1995, and that was in Vigan, Ilocasur. I was invited there because I speak Ilocano, and I was called to interpret for the Ilocano population. And I thought that I would just go there and come home. However, that mission has turned my life around. I have uh, learned to, uh, to live more simply in my life. We've been a volunteering family. We thought uh, we'd volunteer for other projects. But this one, we realized na it's my own countrymen. Tapos, I've, I've thought that it's not every day that people are giving the chance to give back or or be of help to countrymen. So, wow, sabi ko, this is a rare occasion. Um, Dr. Gabiola has been very uh, prominent in the uh, medical community around Stanford and Palo Alto. And we have a very uh, good long-term friend in Palo Alto who knew her and introduced us. Uh, and because the medical mission was <clears throat> coinciding with a family vacation that we had already planned, we simply extended the vacation to include the medical mission volunteer week. This is my very first time to go to a medical mission. And I think I'm going to be going to somewhere. I met some nice, great people that are willing to help. I mean, all kinds of people. And yes, this is such a rewarding experience for me to be able to help out. You know, I feel so grateful and blessed to be able to do this. I know I can do this every year. <laughs> we decided to go to this medical mission. It's because of my mother. My mother is from around here in Tacloban, Leyte. And when she heard that Dr. Gabiola and her um, foundation was going there, she, she, would, she wanted to come. She's 76 years old. One of my friends asked me a year ago that they're coming here. Since I'm coming also from, I speak the language from Tacloba. So I'm very unspecial. That big tragedy, uh, it's so emotional to me. And also, besides me, I left my big family back home in California. So I asked my two daughters, who are also nurses, to join me here. My sister and I, she's also a nurse, and my other cousin, who's also a nurse, and her parents live here in Tacloban, who is my mother's sister. So we, the four of us, decided to have this adventure. And this is my first um, medical mission that I've done. Um, I decided to do this because I heard the, my actually my mom is from uh, Tacloban and I have some family who was affected with the um, sa typhoon and I just wanted to see the people and help out. I started looking into Dr. Gabriela's foundation and wow, you know, she's done a lot for herself and you know, try to help out these people. I didn't know how humongous it's gonna be. Like, you know, she had all this dentist, the dental, the surgery, the optometry. I thought it was just a medical mission, you know, checking blood pressures, but <clears throat> she was doing much bigger than what was what I expected. We have some uh, recipient here that walk in that they can't walk. These are the gout, they got gangrene in their feet, and they got, uh, they got heart problem, and they are stroke. And one of my suggestions is maybe get one or two wheelchair. So we can provide that, so we can go around a lot easier for them. A walker uh, could be made easily, a lightweight walker. Um, even uh, minimally damaged uh, wheelchairs we could bring from home that could be rehabbed here with maybe a new cover or a new seat and be very functional to the elderly who need transport uh, all the time. I want to provide maybe sponsor some patient to have dentures and we will do fluoridization, uh, instruct the patient about oral hygiene uh -huh. so they can improve their hygiene so they will have a prevent, preventative treatment by putting fluoride on their teeth, especially the kids. And yeah, we actually now we give them good process and we teach them how to okay. do, do it the right way. Okay. When I 
I left behind was a part-time job where I still work with my um, physicians and my local organization in the States doing uh, data analysis and quality reporting. Um, so far I'm not using that much here, but I could foresee the day uh, because in many uh, uh, resource challenged countries they are using modern mobile technology to make medical records uh, computerized that uh, potentially uh, that could be one more component in the future where we could rather than generating a lot of paper to show that we're bringing benefit we could literally be creating a, an accessible medical record to the patients over time so that when they go to the next medical mission or to their local doctor they'd actually have their records and the medicine list and um, their history so that we could build on that over time. He left behind uh, to be here in the mission is uh, our preparation for us also. What we left is our, our loved ones, of course our pet, our house, who's going to maintain it and who's going to mow the lawn, who's going to clean the house while we're not there. But uh, you know, we're lucky that my uh, children stayed and they took care of the, uh, the responsibility. Well, back home, uh, we have a family. We have one child, Jojo and Soka, and the two grandchildren, Lucas and uh, Ronin, uh, Connor. And uh, we, we really do miss them a lot. However, uh, we feel compelled, me and my husband, to come and uh, join the group to come and help the people. With the resiliency of our people, we were able to, to build back then, um, making the benchmark of the typhoon, using our experiences of the typhoon, we are expecting to move forward better than before. Medical missions have a purpose and it's challenged by the reality. The reality is these problems that the local community have are very long term and go ongoing. And one of the challenges is how do you take these resources that come in, are here a week, even though they take a year to prepare, they're, they're here just a week. How do you uh, make an impact that lasts longer? And I think uh, to some extent our ability to bring medicines and leave them here for the local uh, Barangay Health Center or Rural Health Center is one step. And to me, um, leaving the long-term training and some resources to follow on, any mm, way in which the medical mission can uh, spread its effect over time, the better uh, help that is to the community. Um, really, you have to experience yourself. You know, it's one thing to hear stories, to see pictures, but to live it in real life, you know, day to day. We're here every day for, was it five days, you know, and just to work side by side, hand in hand with the people, you know, of uh, Tanu Tanuan, you know, it, it's, it's really, you can't, um, you know, we can tell you the story, show you the pictures, but you have to come here and experience it. You know, do a medical mission, and like I said, you don't have to have a medical background. Um, all they need is people to help. You know, whether it's spending your time or even giving donations of any kind, whether it's monetary donations or even like crayons, you know, that, that goes a long way to touching people. Now, I'm so happy and blessed. I'm still able to do this thing, even if I'm an old lady, retired more than 10 years ago, I'm still able to do this thing. My children are so happy I'm doing this. Of course, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to recommend to all my, you know, my friends and my, and my family and my colleagues out back home, you know. I'm going to be more active now from now on, you know, to get donations, you know, for Dr. Gabriela's foundation. So we can do this, you know, we have the funds to do this every year or every two years. Uh, it's, it's been, as I said, priceless, <laughs> exhausting, nakapagod, <laughs> body, body aches, pain, but gratifying, that's the word. It's so gratifying that nawawala yung sakit eh, magtulog ko, wala na, gising ko, okay na naman ako. And it's, it's not a discovery, but it's very inspiring to find out that the country has so many, much beauty to see, and um, to even know about and that's how I have seen the country 
the whole Philippines essentially.